Hi everyone, welcome to Notescraft. Today we're setting our sights on the thought-provoking work of J.M. Coetzee, specifically his novel, Waiting for the Barbarians. We'll be embarking on a journey that maps out the plot, introduces you to the characters, and uncovers key themes. We'll then dive deeper, exploring the novel's cultural significance, literary techniques, and Coetzee's unique perspective. So, brace yourselves for an enlightening exploration. Sit back and enjoy as we delve into the captivating world of Waiting for the Barbarians. This story unfolds in an unnamed empire through the eyes of a nameless magistrate who governs an isolated frontier settlement. The magistrate, our protagonist, leads a peaceful existence until the arrival of Colonel Joel, an officer of the empire who brings with him a wave of paranoia about an impending barbarian invasion. Colonel Joel's brutal and ruthless tactics to gather intelligence from the so-called barbarians disrupt the harmony of the settlement, causing the magistrate to question the empire's ethics and his role within it. This conflict takes a personal turn when the magistrate develops a complex relationship with a barbarian girl, a victim of Joel's interrogations. This relationship becomes the catalyst for the magistrate's rebellion against the empire, leading to his own downfall. He is stripped of his position, imprisoned, and tortured. But in his suffering the Magistrate finds a profound connection with the Barbarians, who too have been victims of the Empire's cruelty. Amidst this narrative, Coetzee weaves in themes of power, justice, and the human capacity for cruelty. He challenges the dichotomy of civilization and barbarism, asking the reader to question who the real Barbarians are. Is it the so-called uncivilized tribes living beyond the frontier, or is it the empire, with its sophisticated machinery of oppression and violence? The novel concludes with the magistrate now freed, left to witness the aftermath of the empire's paranoia. The expected barbarian invasion never happens. The empire's forces withdraw, leaving behind a ruined settlement and a broken man, waiting indefinitely for the barbarians. In Waiting for the Barbarians, Coetzee paints a haunting picture of the destructive cycle of fear and violence, a cycle that not only destroys the victims, but also those who perpetuate it. With the foundation set, let's explore the deeper layers of this fascinating novel. The characters of Waiting for the Barbarians are as intricate as they are captivating. Let's delve into the heart of this literary masterpiece, the characters and the themes they embody. The protagonist, known only as the Magistrate, is an ambivalent figure. He's a colonial official, comfortable in his power, yet he's increasingly troubled by the Empire's brutal treatment of the barbarians. His character journey is one of awakening and transformation, a metaphorical journey from complacency to dissent. Then we have Colonel Jahl, a menacing figure who embodies the Empire's ruthless determination to subdue the barbarians. His cruelty and disdain for the barbarians starkly contrast with the Magistrate's growing empathy for them. It's this tension that drives much of the plot. Woven into the narrative is a nameless girl, a native barbarian. Despite her minor role, she's pivotal, representing the oppressed and brutalized. Her relationship with the Magistrate is complex and fraught, serving as a microcosm of the broader colonial dynamics at play. Now let's turn to the themes. Coetzee's novel is a profound exploration of power, oppression, and the moral complexities of resistance. The Empire's brutal subjugation of the barbarians represents the destructive forces of colonialism, yet Quetzee doesn't offer easy answers. The Magistrate's attempts to help the girl often come across as paternalistic, suggesting that even well-intentioned actions can be tainted by power dynamics. The theme of waiting is also central. The characters, and indeed the Empire itself, are in a state of anxious anticipation for the barbarians' attack that never comes. This sense of impending doom serves as a critique of fear-mongering tactics often used by authoritarian regimes. Finally, the theme of otherness. The barbarians are dehumanized and feared simply because they are different. Quetzee invites us to question such irrational fears and prejudices. These characters and themes make waiting for the barbarians a truly compelling read. Their interplay creates a rich tapestry of tension, conflict, and moral ambiguity, making us question our own perceptions of power, otherness, and resistance. As we delve deeper into the novel, we find ourselves not just reading, but reflecting and questioning. And isn't that the mark of a truly great piece of literature? Coetzee's unique narrative style is a key aspect of waiting for the barbarians. Let's delve into this. Coetzee employs a first-person narrative, which allows us to see the world through the magistrate's eyes. This intimate perspective lends a sense of immediacy and urgency to the narrative. It's like we're right there with him, 
grappling with the same ethical and moral dilemmas. But Coetzee doesn't just use this narrative technique to draw us into the story, he also uses it to challenge us, to make us question our own assumptions and prejudices. The magistrate's uncertainty, his struggle to understand the barbarians, mirrors our own uncertainty about the world around us. Coetzee also employs a sparse, pared-down prose style that reflects the harsh, desolate landscape in which the novel is set. His sentences are short, his descriptions minimal. This stripped-down style helps to highlight the stark moral choices facing the magistrate and by extension, us. But perhaps the most distinctive aspect of Coetzee's narrative style is his use of allegory. Waiting for the Barbarians is not just a story about a remote frontier town, it's a story about power, about the dehumanizing effects of colonialism, about our capacity for cruelty and compassion. In Coetzee's hands, the unnamed empire and its unnamed enemies become symbols of larger universal truths. Coetzee's perspective as a white South African living under apartheid undoubtedly shapes this allegorical approach. He knows firsthand the corrosive effects of systemic oppression, and he uses this knowledge to infuse his narrative with a deep, pervasive sense of unease. We're never quite sure who the barbarians really are, the colonized or the colonizers. This blurring of lines, this refusal to provide easy answers, is a hallmark of Coetzee's narrative style. He doesn't tell us what to think. Instead, he presents us with a complex, morally ambiguous world, and invites us to make our own judgments. Coetzee's narrative style and perspective give Waiting for the Barbarians its distinctive and engaging character. Waiting for the Barbarians isn't just a novel, it's a commentary on society and culture. J.M. Coetzee, in his poignant and profound narrative, weaves a tale that transcends the confines of a fictional empire and reflects on the larger global socio-political landscape. The novel is a critique of imperialism and colonialism, themes that have shaped our world history. Coetzee's depiction of the empire, mirrors the oppressive regimes that have existed throughout history, using power and fear to subjugate the other. The barbarians, on the other hand, symbolize marginalized communities, often victimized and dehumanized in the name of progress and civilization. But Coetzee's narrative doesn't just stop at critiquing imperialism, it delves deeper into the human condition, exploring the inherent fear of the unknown that often fuels prejudice and discrimination. The barbarians are feared not because they are inherently dangerous, but because they represent the unknown, the unfamiliar, the other. This fear of the other is a societal issue that still resonates today, making the novel's cultural significance timeless. Moreover, the novel's focus on the moral dilemma of the unnamed magistrate, torn between duty and empathy, highlights the individual's struggle against systemic oppression. It underscores the importance of individual responsibility in challenging unjust systems, a theme that echoes in today's conversations about social justice and activism. By presenting a world where power dynamics, fear and prejudice dictate societal norms, Coetzee forces us to reflect on our own world. It's a mirror held up to society revealing its flaws and urging us to question, challenge and ultimately change the status quo. In essence, Waiting for the Barbarians is a cultural artifact, a testament to the human capacity for both cruelty and compassion. It's a narrative that transcends its pages and resonates in the real world, making us confront uncomfortable truths about society and human nature. Through Waiting for the Barbarians, Coetzee gives us a profound commentary on society and culture. As we conclude our exploration of Waiting for the Barbarians, we hope you've gained a deeper understanding of this compelling novel. In our journey together we've delved deep into the heart of J.M. Coetzee's masterpiece. We've navigated the intricate plot, dissected the characters, and grappled with the profound themes that underscore the narrative. The novel's raw portrayal of the human condition, its exploration of power dynamics, and its poignant commentary on societal structures have hopefully resonated with you, prompting you to reflect on your own perspectives. We've examined the author's unique literary techniques which have left an indelible imprint on contemporary literature. From his meticulous character development to his masterful use of symbolism, Coetzee has showcased the power of words to provoke thought and ignite conversation. We also looked at the cultural significance of Waiting for the Barbarians. The novel's enduring relevance even decades after its publication is a testament to its universal appeal and timeless themes. It continues to inspire and challenge readers around the world serving as a potent reminder of literature's capacity to transcend boundaries and stir the human spirit. And now, dear viewer, it's time for you to engage. Your thoughts, your insights, they matter. So let's keep this conversation going. 
Thank you for watching. Please like and share our video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you enjoyed our content, let us know what you'd like to see next in the comments down below.